We've got a good Wi-Fi at home for, for some reason. Maybe it's just right. Well, I'm mad at not. High adventure trips today or this summer? Um, yeah, there was the Hawking Hills one. Uh, yeah, we went to Hawking Hills last, last week. Oh. Yes. How was that? I, I wasn't able to go oh. to a forestry camp. Okay. It was hot. Yes. Well, how was forestry camp? Where'd you go for that one? Um, camp Canopy. Sure. Which is Camp Muskingum. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's pretty good. Camp. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Is that unreasonable? Is Muskingum unreasonable? No sea base this year? No film on? Mm, no. no. Okay. No, uh, no canoeing up north? No. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> sounds like fun. Okay. All right. Very good. When's summer camp this year? Um, Coming up? I think the 17th. 17th, good. Like you've done that. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. I see a fifth year, I think. You know what to look forward to. Thank you. Two fifth year? Uh, fourth year. Fourth year? Okay. Both for your fifth? Very good. Of course. That's exactly, yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make it. Okay. Okay. You'll make it from the water park. You've got to get to the splice. Junior splice. It's helpful. It's appreciated. Get back up is the question.
Jamie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah, perfect. Understood. We have one council member that is still having the effects of COVID. So we still have an opportunity for a council member to call in up until uh, July 1st. Huh. And the rules revoked. What's the word? Re refers back to in person. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We have a clear box. No.
<laughs> I know the questions to answer with the hot seat. Six, seven months. Do you have a plan for this? Um, Do you know what a timeline is? <laughs> <laughs> They're here tonight. <laughs> Put your badges on a timeline. And that way you that way you keep up and get through it.
I now call to order the committee a whole meeting for June 27th, 2022. The time is 7 p.m. Ben, would you please call the roll? Member Orr? Here. Member Matheny? Here. Member Volt? Here. Member Troy? Here. Member McLeister? Here. Member Waring? Here. Uh, Member Wired is absent, six present. Okay. Uh, motion to excuse Member Waring. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Sorry. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Uh, Daryl, you're up first. We have a request from the administration to tighten our data <coughs> language for weeds. Uh, if you will open your packets and have them, uh, Ben has taken chapter 1739, he has marked it, and before I kick it over <coughs> to the administration, uh, the basic purpose of the administration's request is to expedite the manner in which we bring property owners from weeds and grass into more rapid compliance. Right now, there's an extensive notification process, and we give them literally many weeks to address an issue. We're going to take that down to 40 hours. It's just that simple. And this goes hand in hand with the code enforcement and building maintenance efforts that are not currently underway. Uh, Patrick, uh, I don't want to steal too much of your thunder, but that's in the essence of it. <clears throat> uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, so in, in uh, dealing with this now with a couple of years, I first want to thank the council uh, you know, for allowing us to you know, enter into uh, an agreement with le for legal services that are proving to be quite advantageous to the city. And this is just a yet another example. So in the past, we just couldn't seem to find a way to cut through uh, all the regulatory um, legal uh, notification issues in a timely manner. And it put us in a position where roughly it would, if somebody didn't really want to abate or uh, mow their grass, uh, it would probably be somewhere in the order of four to five weeks before we would be able to uh, effectively go in and cut it ourselves. We do publish a notice in the newspaper every April 1st, but it was all the other steps that were necessary uh, along the way. And it just, I think, was a matter of just not thinking outside the box clearly or having people that really understand the law clearly. And uh, that's just completely, it's just unacceptable. It just is unacceptable. And there's just so many properties I spend uh, working uh, now driving the city, uh, doing some data collection on various issues that we are 
trying to think outside the box on, and this is one of them. It's just there's so many properties that are just not being maintained at all, um, for as far as weed and grass goes. So <clears throat> this process is going to shorten it to, in essence, when we go, we're going to knock on the door, talk to a, a person living there, find out if they're a owner or a tenant uh, of the property, so we know we get to the right person. Uh, give them a notice that, hey, we're coming back in 48 hours to see if this has been taken care of. If it's not been taken care of, then we're going to give a notice, you know, a legal notice at that time, that you have 48 hours to comply or we're cutting it, having it cut. And uh, you'll be sent an invoice for that cut that will be done by a, a contract service. Uh, and if you don't, you know, pay it, then ultimately it's going to end up on your uh, county uh, tax bill, where it will eventually get paid. So that part's the same as what we've always done. It's just it's taken before it's taken too long to get there. Uh, it used to take even longer than that, but we, you know, several weeks it just isn't cutting it. So no pun intended. Sorry, I just thought of that. So that's just a little bit of tweak. It's a 48-hour notice that we'll be back in 48 to see if it's been done. And then uh, after that, we'll be back to have it cut. Schedule it cut. Now right now, you know, because it takes so long, you know, our nuisance officers are driving the same properties, you know, on a, almost like on an every other day basis. It's a lot of extra trips and wasted time to see if somebody's complied, when have they complied, and, and that kind of thing. So. John, questions? Not at this time. Dave? We're in Ohio, and it rains in the spring. Is, is three days, four days? It's in is essence, it? yeah, four days, I think. I mean, by the time they're getting the notice, the grass is already eight inches tall. Right. So it already hasn't been cut for a week or two right. by the time it gets our notice. So uh, I don't really feel a lot of a need to give them more than that. I think that's more than generous. That would be my only concern, is, is getting it done. I own rental property, and if the, if the contractor is supposed to cut the grass, bales, goes out of business, it might take more than two or three days to find a replacement. But a house, springtime, I don't know. That's my only concern. Well, I think what, what we end up doing is, John, is, Dave, is just keep carving exceptions into it. I don't want to carve exceptions. And, and it's, you know, I, I, my contractor's unavailable. You know, we hear that one a lot. Yeah. If I don't even have a contract, my lawnmower won't start. Or it's just one thing after another. I mean, it's just, there is a responsibility of a homeowner. You just have to take care of your property. There are people in this community that take care of their property, and it's really a disservice to them that we're, we're allowing this to, to uh, go on. So we're, we're four days in the city of Cutter. Pardon me? Four days the city will cut it? Four days and the city will authorize a contractor to come in and cut it. If the contractor is authorized but the property gets cut, do we city still pay the contractor? The city is still going to bill them, bill the homeowner for service. If the contractor is billing us, we're billing them. Okay. These contractors that we have to have an arrangement with are saying that we need to have city services first. I got to put my private clients to the side right. because you know we're we're asking that it be done. Like okay, we don't want you in a week or two weeks. We want you now today. Right. Okay. Whether they provide the service or not, I understand. Mr. Stewart. Good. Mr. McLeister. No, sir. No comments. Mrs. Warren. Same. Same. Very good. All right, uh, if you look at the ordinances drafted, uh, it is absent one provision, and that is an emergency clause. Uh, if we were to give this three readings, go into 30 days effective after that signature, after the mayor's signature, we'll be, we'll probably be into September. So what I'm gonna propose we do is that uh, I'll ask for a vote to move this to uh, committee, for, to the regular council meeting for next Monday night with an emergency clause. Next Monday would be July 11th. Or excuse me. Next meeting is the next meeting is July 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Can our contractor do that? 
Okay. Can our contractor be available that soon? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'll, let her, I'll make a motion that we uh, move this uh, to the agenda at our next council meeting on July 11th. There's a motion. Story of seconds. All in favor? All Aye. 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 Done. All right. Motion carries. <coughs> All right. David, you're up next. Okay, so the administration has. The administration has negotiated with the uh, water treatment plant employees, and they have come to an agreement on. Bear with me, the wrong page. <coughs> So with the Utility Workers Union of America, Local 605, and that's the water plant. I believe there's six individuals there. Um, one of the great things about this is they started negotiations somewhat early, but uh, the process went very well. And it went well because of communication and relationship the administration has with the employees there. Um, as with other groups, they negotiated the benefit of vacation time on a bi-weekly basis instead of annual, so it accrues um, as they work throughout the year. The vacation time payout for those hours accrued over two weeks will be paid out on a quarterly basis. The um, also negotiated for these employees a uniform allowance, which in their area of work is very important. And I think that is a $300 a year uniform allowance. And then there's also the, uh, the wage increase, which is always part of the negotiation, and they negotiated a 3% wage increase over the next three years, uh, which is consistent with other groups that we've got. The neat thing about their increase here, and I, I kudos to administration for realizing the value of certificates and additional education, but those that carry a full chemistry or microbiology lab certification, certification will also be eligible for a pay increase as long as those are current and valid. The last thing that I want to bring up is the, uh, the Labor Management Committee that they're going to participate in. And this is part of the communication side that builds that trust in the relationship between management and the employees. And I think that this is going to be a valuable asset to continuing that, that relationship and keeping it strong. Mr. Diorio, Ms. Albeck, anything else you would like to add? Ms. Farina? Well said. Any questions from council? Hearing none, I would make a motion that we move this to our next council meeting. The vote will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I responded aye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn the committee of meeting. The vote moves. Second. Clear and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Motion carries. Adjourn. Give you guys a minute to go to the next one. The council, the city council meeting for June 27th, 2022. The time is 7:13 p.m. Opening prayer, Daryl.
Please rise for the prayer and remain standing for the pledge of allegiance. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, we offer simple thanks this evening for the glories of summer, the beauty of which has mesmerized poets since the beginning of time. And we also pray this evening for the family and soul of David Kinkema, longtime director of UI and community leader. We are grateful for his service as we are for the summer. May he rest in peace. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Justice and justice for all. And justice for all. Ben, would you please call the roll? Number Shura. Here. Number Holt. Here. Number Matheny. Here. Number Orr. Here. Number Waring. Here. Number McLeese there. Here. And Member Wire is absent. Six present. Motion to excuse member work. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we previously tabled the May 16th minutes. Um, can I have a motion and a second to take from the table the minutes from May 16th, 2022? May 16th minutes. We'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And can I have a motion and a second to approve minutes as presented from May 16th, June 6th, and June 13th of 2022? So moved. moved. The vote will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, at this time we will begin the recognition of the public. Each individual will have be granted five minutes to speak. The time of the rules will be displayed on the screen. When it's your turn to speak, please come to the podium and begin by stating your name and address for the record. Larry Tripp, 1127 East Naples, North Canton, Ohio. Last week I told a story about the body group. Anybody, everybody, nobody, and somebody. Later that evening, I asked myself, where do I fit in that group as a citizen of North Canton? Didn't take me too long to believe I'm a nobody, like anybody who brings a message seeking good government in North Canton for everybody, but only, oft, only often to hear the wrath of those at, on city council who think they are a somebody. Three weeks ago, June 6th, Agenda cover page prepared by Council Clerk Young read as follows. President Stroya is requesting a discussion of the rules of City Council and potential changes in response and comments made to him by several members. My first question would, would be who and what were who and what were those comments made by other members of Council? Councilman Stroya, the same members who project themselves as somebody, along with an occasional remarks by the fourth ward councilman, once again that evening, completely st stole your thunder. Once again, the conversation drifted towards the speakers standing behind this podium as the fall guys for not following the rules and causing disorderly conduct within the these kinds of walls. We don't care if the city of Canton has a three minute limitation for public speaks. This is North Canton and we have five minutes. To hear a public speaker being unprepared is just like the criticism directed to a young woman retailer who many, when many evenings your very own council members come unprepared just as you and other associates were on June the 6th. Council President merely lead your meetings by following Rule 38, which reads as follows. There shall be no debate between the speaker 
and members of the public audience, city employees, or council members. Also, Rule 39 as follows. Members of the public audience, city employees, and council members shall not interrupt or otherwise engage the speaker during his five minutes of speech. Only after the speaker has completed speaking may a council member or city employee seated at the dais request permission from the president of council to respond to the speaker's comments. Enforce these rules that you, that you and city council members, not the public, not other city members, have created. This would go a long way in eliminating the travesty you folks sitting before me created last Tuesday night. This was probably one of the worst meetings I've seen while coming to council meetings. Only your meeting needlessly triggered more some unusual aftermath. So let me just read a little poem. Many a citizens have had their say from a council of thank you, but we will do it our way. Then one, not then not one, not two, not three, but four professional speakers spoke on council floor. Comments with character but only too short, some with implications, we may see you in court. The city, in this case, with nothing to say, implies once again, we will do it our way. Uh, by the way, you see, I didn't make you in uh, poetry in college. Thanks. wanting to address council. <coughs> Chuck Osborne, 307 Fairview Street, Southeast, North Canton, Ohio. My comments are in regards to the proposed charter amendment to establish four-year terms of office for North Canton elected officials. In evaluating the proposed charter amendments, each and every member of council should be able to explain the reasons for any changes and the benefits of those changes for citizens. I have heard no logical reason supporting many of the proposed changes to the city's charter. I can understand that office holders want longer terms. It benefits them and them alone. But do longer terms benefit city residents? I think not. Currently the city's charter specifies a two-year residency requirement before a citizen can run for elective office. Given that requirement, under our current two-year terms of office, new city residents could find themselves having to live in the city for four years before they could run for elective office. To illustrate that fact, let me explain in the present. For a new resident who may have moved into North Canton in January of this year, 2022, they would not be eligible to run for office in the 2023 election cycle as they would have only lived in the city for one year and ten months. Currently, that citizen would have to wait until November of 2025, nearly four years after having moved into the city before being able to run for office. Had this council recently been elected to four-year terms of office in 2021, a new resident could find themselves having to live in the city for as long as six years before they can run for office. How is this change beneficial for citizens of North Canton? Some years ago, well-known city resident and businessman Terry Horner had his candidacy to run for a two-year seat on North Kent City Council denied because of the Charter's two-year residency requirement. Even though Mr. Horner remained a resident of North Kent for many more years, he lost interest after that experience and never chose to run for a seat on City Council ever again. How many other citizens are going to lose interest in running for a seat on Council when they realize they may very well have to wait as long as six years? In the course of an election campaign, a candidate learns about the community. Residents get to know the candidates and participate in what we all treasure as the democratic process of our government. Four years is a long time. I would foresee office holders resigning during such long terms. This would result in remaining members of council filling 
the vacant council seats and thus leaving citizens out of the choosing their representatives. That council appointed replacement would then run as an incumbent, thereby edging out any citizen who had waited nearly six years to run for office. This proposed amendment serves only few elected officials. It does not serve citizens. I urge you to vote no on ordinance number 47, 2022. I will also add that your Ohio state representatives serve two-year terms. Your Ohio congressman in Washington serves two-year terms. Do you think you're better than they are? Lastly, I see again, my city councilman has chose, or council person, excuse me, has chosen to appear virtually yet again. Thankfully, this is the last opportunity to not show up for a council meeting. And once again, Mrs. Warren, I ask, where are you at this moment? Why can't you show up? You're going to be taking off for a uh, six-week vacation here just in a matter of weeks. And yet you've been gone for several weeks just in the last couple weeks. This is not right. And for each of you to sit here and condone this week after week after week. Imagine we did go to a four-year term. You would have to live with a fellow council person who had this kind of lack of dedication to their council seat. Is that what you want to put up with? And nobody wants to stand up and say, this is not right. We know Mrs. Warren is abusing this, this loophole that was created for the height of the COVID epidemic. Are you even here in the state, Mrs. Warren? This is not right. And I think enough, each of you have enough integrity that you wouldn't abuse the privilege. And it ends, as someone said earlier, January or July 1st. Thank you. Anyone else wanting to address council? Okay. Moving on to old business. I have a motion and a second to read by title only ordinance 45 20. The vote moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Amending Ordinance 55 2020, establishing a designated outdoor <coughs> refreshment area in the city of North Canton in order to expand the hours of operation and area thereof. Well, this is the third reading. Um, I don't have anything to add. Um, we're going to be adding Monday and Tuesday. Just, you know, this is, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> this is Daryl's. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, John, you're doing <laughs> that's a fine okay. job. That's right. <laughs> This um, came from, John, this came from you. That was a great summary, and I would only add that not only do we add additional days, and but we also uh, expanded the map pursuant to request from uh, one of the uh, community organizations and one of the businesses. And uh, if there are no other questions or comments, I'll make a motion that we adopt the third reading of Ordinance 45-22, as John has recommended. I'll uh, second. <laughs> Be careful. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so we have the charter ordinances coming up here. I'm going to read a note. Um, I wish I would have printed it larger, so I'm not it's, uh, due to the provisions of the Ohio Constitution regarding the passage of the Charter Amendments, we do not want to pass any of the Charter Amendments until July 11th. Otherwise, we'll have to call a special meeting, which is very costly. Election. Special, special, election. special election, sorry, which is very costly. Um, can I have a motion and a second to postpone ordinances 47-2022, 48-2022, 
2022, 50-2022, 51-2022, and 52-2022 until July 11, 2022. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. President, may I say something? Yes. Um, last time, two weeks ago now, uh, Ms. Platt's here and she asked us about putting the whole language on the ballot, the old language and the new language. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know for the record, we did get confirmation from the Board of Elections that they will let us do that. <coughs> All right, so moving on to, can I have a motion and a second to read by title only, Ordinance 53-2022. I'll make the motion to the vote will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. An ordinance amending Chapter 155 personnel regulations of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton, specifically Section 155.09, Leave of Absence Provisions, Subsection C, Vacation Regulations, to amend the vacation accrual <coughs> method for full time exempt personnel. David. So this is our third reading, and this is for those that are not represented by a, a bargaining group, but it takes on the same appearance of vacation hours that are accrued bi-weekly, and the same type of payout, bringing that in to be consistent. With Any questions? Thank you. Motion. The vote will move. I'll second. Mayor and second. Please state exactly what you're doing. Motion the adoption of Ordinance 53-22. Thank you. Story of seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on to new business. Can I have a motion and a second to suspend Council Rule 24 to allow for considerations of the Water Treatment Collective Bargaining Agreement without a committee report. The vote will move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Uh, this item will be referred to as Resolution 55-2022. Can I have a motion and a second to read by title only Resolution 55-2022? So moved. Both seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben? A resolution approving the collective bargaining agreement between the City of North Canton and the Utility Workers Union of America, Local 605, the water treatment plant, as negotiated by the Department of Administration and declaring the same to be an emergency. So this just came out of the committee. We discussed the terms of the, the agreement. The reason we need to put it on emergency is that these pay increases take effect July 1st. So we need to get that handled today to make sure that everything's in place for our employees at the water treatment plant. Anything to be added? Questions? <coughs> Again, I would only congratulate the administration uh, and his negotiating team for uh, wrapping this up in a collegial manner and a timely fashion. Thank you. I thank the council for their support, but also uh, for those that aren't here, give it to make time in their day to be here virtually so that this could be passed on an emergency so that we can get it into effect for those employees. Okay, can I have a motion and a second to adopt the first reading of resolution 55 2022? Revolt moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. And can I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council uh, requiring three readings? So, so moved. We'll vote the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And finally, can I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 55 2022 under the suspension of the rules? The vote will move. With any will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to department reports. Catherine? I have no report. Gina? No report. Patrick? No report. 
Mayor. Well, the pickleball courts are, uh, <laughs> have been dedicated. That's important. And uh, we had a, uh, it was last Friday, and it was well received. And uh, uh, I think it'll be a, another outdoor activity that uh, people want to come and enjoy. And that was successful. I know we're gearing up for uh, the 4th of July. And uh, I caution everyone who will <coughs> be purchasing fireworks to uh, practice safety as the law comes into effect on July 1st. And uh, uh, if, if there's anything that we can all request from police or fire is if you're going to have home firework displays, it's got to be in a safe manner and keep your uh, neighbor in, in mind. Uh, and that uh, uh, we're going to wait and see how this transpire, uh, transpires in our community. But uh, I just really want to caution people to be careful with the fireworks. And uh, the 4th of July fireworks that the JCs have is a great venue to go to. It's free. And if you really want to see a big display, I would say go there. And there's other places in and around the county that you can take in fireworks. And just you know, watch out for each other, our little ones, and uh, just be careful. Uh, to, uh, the message is strictly safety uh, when, when, uh, for your displays. Uh, that's uh, probably one of my major uh, most concerns at this, at this time. don't have anything else really to share other than the holidays coming up. Just be safe, uh, enjoy it, and uh, again, thank you for uh, getting the uh, collective bargaining agreement uh, settled so that we can go forward with that. And that's about it for right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ben? Um, yes, tomorrow is our police sergeant's promotional exam. Um, I'm going to take the liberty of saying they're willing applicants are excited for tomorrow. Um, hopefully they all do well, and hopefully they're all studying at home right now. Um, and then secondly, I've been giving you all periodic updates on my office's efforts to build a database of legislation in minutes. Uh, we have finally broken through to the 21st century, so we are getting to the end, um, only to start phase two of Crossroads. But that's all. Wait. No report. report. Okay. Moving on to council reports. Uh, let's start with John. Well, Friday night was a big night uh, for the pickleball. Those of you who haven't been over there, there are nice courts. We've done wonders at that facility. Hats off to the administration for what we're doing over there and what we'll continue to do over there. Um, yeah, or Arrowhead, excuse me, long day today. Um, but it, it's such a beautiful facility over there, from the golf course to the changes we've made at the pool. It's really uh, the crown jewel of the fourth ward, I'd like to call it. Um, again, thank the administration. David, I mentioned it briefly before, you talking about the, um, the negotiations that took place. Daryl said it very nicely, too. But there's a lot that goes into that, and negotiations can get adversarial, and they can go long time, and they can go legal, and they can get really ugly at times. And that's when there's no relationship between personnel and administration. And what we have now is working, and it's because of the dedication of, of the team and getting that out there. It's the consistent communication that takes place. It's the fact that they have built trust between administration and the employees, and they know that it's going to be honest and fair. I, I mentioned the, the Labor Management Committee. Uh, there's three members of management and three members of union that are in there, and they're granted time off from work to be part of this group that's communicating on things that are of importance to them. So I, I commend you on the work, and thank you for that, and ask you to please keep that communication line open and keep that trust there. It's very important to the city and to the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Daryl. Thank you, Mr. Storia. Um, 
I'd like to answer Mr. Osborne's questions tonight about explaining the rationale for term limits. I think it's important to understand that, uh, well, let me just take a step, that Mr. Mr. Osborne asserts, and I'm going to quote him, that it does not serve our citizens. The fact of the matter is that most of government operates on four-year terms or longer. If you're a United States Senator, it's six years. If you serve in the Ohio Senate, it's four. If you're a county office holder, it's four. And every trustee in the state of Ohio serves, not two, but four years. A while back, uh, Mr. Young and I took a look at, as you all remember, uh, raising salaries for council. I commissioned him to see if we could gather some, gather some uh, data around those, those salary raises for council. And the study was not conclusive. And I'll just be, it was good. But so the, the idea was, how do we make our elections more competitive here in North Canada? We heard that from citizens, many of whom stood right here at the microphone. I want competitive elections. Okay, what's it going to take? Well, first of all, we thought there was a salary issue. So we looked at that, and Ben did a nice job mapping it out, and showed we were probably still at the 1982 level, and probably ought to bump it up a little bit. Okay, don't go to the high, don't go to the low, but get it above 82. But the other thing that we discovered, as we looked at this, although not completely con conclusive, was that longer terms may produce more candidates. We had a fair number of competitive races this last time, I, I would argue, perhaps based upon slightly higher salaries. There are practical reasons why you, want, you may want to consider four years. The first is, and this has been my experience, councils are effective on a two-year cycle for about 18 months. They get into the summer election, and then they go into campaign mode. And everything kind of slowly grinds down because their focus is elsewhere. Even happens to mayors, I might add. Today, we deal with big issues. Big issues that may take more than just 18 months to get your arms around and see completed. Would you rather have 18 months with a slowdown, or would you rather go with something up less than, than four years. And I would argue it probably makes more sense. For the newbies, the new members of the council, I'd much rather have that person working along and gathering information over a four-year term rather than a two. So, I think you can make a decent argument. I understand the argument for two years. But I think the interests of the citizens may, in fact, be better served by four because they have more t council members have more time to work on the issues. If it's a working council, if it is a working council, or has a working mayor and administrator, but that's the, that would be the rationale that I would lay out. I didn't participate in the discussions. I voted for this. I support it. But. It just seems to be a better place to be if you're looking for your city's long-term future. So, the only other thing I would add was uh, Friday night, I was also at the pickleball courts, and uh, Mrs. Revolt expressed great regret that she did not have an opportunity to take money from the mayor. <laughs> she was ready. She had a, a pocket full of ones, and she was ready to go. But he, he ducked out of her. And wise man, my dad. She's got a killer back in the night. No comment. <laughs> That's my rule. Smart. <laughs> <laughs>
Stephanie. No report. Jamie. Yeah, thank you. Um, hey, I just wanted to say that um, this whole COVID experience, the most frustrating part has been not being able to go and see those uh, great pickleball courts uh, being dedicated. Um, I think that was one of the things that rung true. It's my um, notification popped up on my phone on Friday. I realized, darn, I was going to miss that because I had been so looking forward to that. But uh, they look great, and uh, many thanks to all who were involved. Um, I think I would have certainly enjoyed seeing um, Mrs. Revolt take on the mayor, so <laughs> maybe next time. Um, also, just want to, again, thank you all. Again, I guess not your doing, but thank you for the opportunity to join you here virtually as I... Uh, actually, my wife and I both deal with the after effects of uh, having COVID-19. Um, the only other thing I'd like to add is, is that uh, we have a holiday weekend before us. And just to support those uh, local organizations that do so much in our community, namely um, the North Canton YMCA with their uh, July 4th race, as well as the North Canton JCs with the July 4th parade, as well as the fireworks. Um, other than that, I have nothing else to share. I'd like, to, I'd like to make one more comment. I'd actually like to, to link up something that John said in, in a comment that Dave made. Uh, and this goes back to pickleball. Uh, I think many times we don't realize the amount of, of lift that goes into pulling off projects. Uh, Dave cited the collective bargaining agreement that was really the result of a huge effort at relationship building by the administrative team, the director of finance, and our, our deputy director of administration in working with our employees. But the other example of real hard work and attention to detail is actually at Arrowhead. The course is in terrific shape. The grounds are wonderful. People are happy to be there, and it's a direct attribute to the administration's hard work to clean that facility up, and as John indicated, the show place in the fourth ward. It really is great. It was a wreck 48 months ago. It was a disaster, and the administration, the partnership, with our contractor has turned this place around. And it's terrific. So pickleball is really just the is the, the tip of the iceberg of all the hard work that's that's gone into making that facility what it is right now. And it might add it's black. It's black. Thank you. It's you black. Um, I just want to say I'm um, sharing my thoughts and prayers uh, to Christina as she continues through her recovery. Um, then I'm very much looking forward to July 4th. I usually go on vacation, so I'm excited to be in town for this. Um, fireworks. And then what time does the parade start? It starts at 10.30 to 12. 10.30 to 12. On the 4th, right. All right. And they always assemble up at uh, uh, 7th yeah. and Street and, and Dogwood. And, uh, Awesome. Yeah, I, it, I think it's been three years since I've been in town for that, so I'm very excited to, to see that. Um, and the last thing, I, I need two more things. So what a difference in the administration and how you work together to finish collective bargain, bargaining and how it used to be. I mean, night and day, that's, that's, I can't say enough good things about that. So congratulations. Um, and then Wines for Local, that's all I've got to say. Uh, moving on to the calendar uh, coming up, July 4th is going to be um, Independence Day, obviously. We're not going to have a meeting then. Followed up our last meeting before uh, the summer recess on July 11th. Any other questions, comments? The motion to adjourn? When will we return, return from recess? Um, um, August 15th. Motion to adjourn. We both lose. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Aye.